Mr. Philip Misoski is coming from South Germany. He's going to speak about uh, creating an innovative uh, IT company in Macedonia that can sell globally. Thank you for joining us. Hi, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, so I heard there are a lot of high school uh, or college students coming from Potsdam. Is that correct? Raise your hands. All right, awesome. So that's my alma mater. Uh, actually, I dropped out of there. I was in high school for two years and I dropped out. I'll, I'll tell you a story about that. But actually, the story of mine, uh, you know, I'm a technologist, like the previous, well, the previous colleague from Oracle. I typically were like, you know, good at creating software and selling boring enterprise software, maybe not as good as presenters. So I'll try to be five minutes so you know how much I would suck, you know, and then you can you know, take a break or something like that. But uh, the story that I'm going to talk about is through my personal experiences. It's not going to be about what we're going to talk about on Friday, uh, which is really, uh, literally about the opportunity that we have here uh, with entrepreneurs and young folks and even established companies. Uh, it's actually going to be my personal story, my personal introduction of you know, why am I here, why am I sitting in front of you. And it's actually about two points. It's about success and about failure. And you never hear about failure, yeah? All these successful people that will call, come up, you know, you've seen a lot of them. But a lot, a lot of that behind them is a lot of failures, including myself. I love to talk about this failure as well. <coughs> and the success part, I'm going to talk about how to disrupt yourself. I will talk about the term of disruption. And the failure part, I will talk about the fears. I have a fear of public speaking. I'm standing here. And we'll, we'll come to it, how it developed over the years and what I'm doing about it. All right, so success, the great uh, you know, uh, things about us and the companies that we work for, etc. SAP, you might have heard, if not, check it out on the website, leading enterprise software vendor. I've been there for 16 years, uh, working in Silicon Valley, working in Israel, in the is Israeli Silicon Valley, uh, which is like the second venture capitalist market out in California now based in Germany in our headquarters. It's a European company. Uh, I'm very proud of you know, being there 16 years and I've gone through a lot of uh, success and failure within the SAP. So let's talk about the success part, uh, parts. Uh, one thing that Nina, uh, did I get your name correct, Nina? Uh, one of the things that she showed is paycheck of 5,000 euros or 30,000 uh, 30, dinar or something like that. This was amazing because that was my starting point, my first success. Before I talk about it, let me uh, explain a little bit of uh, disruption, what it means. Uh, have you guys, uh, you probably heard, but uh, the whole Innovator's Dilemma book, which is quite publicized, you might have heard, yes, no? It talks about how companies disrupt themselves. And you know, let's take Apple, you've heard it many times, but if you look at Apple's performance, if they were just in the PC business, and they you know, did a great uh, new PC, but they never disrupted the music industry, or they never disrupted the, uh, the phone industry, the watch industry. They would have been a great company, but not valued at whatever, 800 billion, like you know, 500 times more than you know, this, this country's GDP or something like that. It, it, they would have done great, but not at a level they're the largest uh, company out there in the world. What they did years, and in, in several years, in several waves, they disrupted themselves. They went into the music industry, they said, screw the label records. They went into the phone business, and you know what? There's something wrong about this, we're gonna disrupt the business, and they're not doing it in the watch industry. And by the way, all the Swiss manufacturers, they're like shaking their asses. Sorry, I'm still using my French. But uh, anyways, so this disruption is very important also for your personal career and growth. You have to know, you have to seize that moment. I never realized that, actually, that I had this, these disruptions, of personal disruption in my career that led to major growth. But when I look back, I was 15 years ago when I dropped out of Comfort China. Dropped out is a, is a little bit more of a negative word. But actually, I won a scholarship uh, from George Soros. It was at 5,000 euros, something like that, like a paycheck that said, you know, you are a winner because you, you know, you were whatever the smartest in math and English, and you get a great interview, you impress the people. You're going to the US for six months. I was like, woo -hoo! you know, like, that is my moment. That was a disruption that took me from a linear curve of saying, hey, I would have stayed, you know, going to Korchagin, graduate Korchagin, go probably <laughs> to ETF, and then, you know, do a great job. Rather, completely disrupt myself, a whole new environment. 
And you would think, oh, California and Silicon Valley. No, Kentucky out of all places, okay? <laughs> but that's not the point. This was the major disruption which led to me to go to high school for two years, graduate there, get into a lot of scholarships, get a liberal arts uh, college education in the US, and then my first main job after working for like six months interning, it was a mistake, but we'll talk about that later. Actually, my first real paying job was SAP. I didn't ever know what this company did, you know. Uh, and uh, this was my second disruption. So at, years, uh, at age of 15, I had my first disruption of you know, going to the US, completely changing my lifestyle. At age of 21, it was a 10x disruption. Also because you know, you're getting salary paid for your work that was worth you know, 10x more than you, know, you were given like, uh, when you were 15. It was a whole complete new space of, of experience you know, working for such a company. Six years later, and I have these disruptions like every six years for some reason, now that I look back. Um, it was a disruption because I went to Israel, I uh, became a, an executive uh, manager of a, of a large team, at the same time, I even invested in properties and real estate. I realized, wow, there's actually a huge market in there. So I've disrupted myself at a 100x level. So a lot of success in my 20s that I'm really proud to talk about. And you, know, you might ask yourself, okay, so what was the next six years? Well, actually, it was not so much about you know, financial or, or success. It was actually success about going from I to we. I mean, you know, getting married, having a child, and actually one of the proudest accomplishments that I had in the last you know, three, four years. So, now let's talk about failures, okay? Cool, so success, awesome, we get it, we, we get how, uh, how, how it works. And actually there's some uh, psychology studies that says, uh, when you're getting promoted, you have your adrenaline level going up, so you feel more self-confident. Everybody talks about self-confidence, but you're not arrogant, you're not cocky. And that's all great, and your cortisol level is low. But once you start hitting failures, this is where uh, chemistry, things happen, your hormones are changing. That's why people don't like failures. And particularly, you know, in, in Macedonia, I, you know, I was raised like most of you guys to not accept failures or not to have to meet these failures, right? Or, or, or simply always, you know, success, study, etc. right? So what happens when you have a failure, actually your cortisol level goes up, makes you very vulnerable. Uh, and, you know, I had a luxury like a, a, a week ago or two weeks ago at a conference we talked about uh, Richard Branson. I saw him like three weeks ago, a week ago. It was a lady from, from our business review talking about this fascinating study of, of confidence and you know the, the chemistry that's going and you know the field. So when you're having a success, it's not a problem. But you have a lot of the CEOs, for example, who hit a failure for whatever reason, yeah. And then, for example, they never reappear. They never you know make the next thing because. The, the failure is so high, the cortisol level is so high, they never like reinvent themselves. So it's very important that you hit these failures also in your young age. In my case, I really didn't hit those in the 20s. So it really got me in my 30s, which I'm now 37 years old. And uh, it's, it's important to learn from them, uh, important to learn as, as early as possible. Big failure, for example, is right after I came back from Israel. Major restructuring, we work for large enterprises like Oracle, 80,000, 100,000 people. Things change. Two of my levels uh, of my bosses simply were gone. One day, I'm back. I'm no longer responsible for what I was doing before. At that point, I was running with a startup here in Macedonia with friends where I invested. I lost all of it. I lost my friendship. Even my private relationship with my former girlfriend at that point in time, <laughs> gone to you know nowhere. So major failure. I start checking my mind, my brain, my back, my stomach. I had, you know, people can identify probably a lot of these symptoms of fear and anxiety, which are now so prominent in our in, in enterprises. Maybe not Macedonia, maybe maybe yes, but in the whole Western world, it's like there's a whole, uh, you know, that companies are sending psychiatrists to, you know, examine people. You know, are they doing well, and etc. So, so you really, at least never felt that I had limits. So people talk about you know, working your ass and working hard. At some point in time, you will see that there is a limit. And you better be careful, you better be ready to accept those are limits. Um, and how to deal with it. Another failure that I, that I hit was, uh, after this you know, major series of break time where I tried to prevent myself, I, uh, I was invited by a job interview for Microsoft, a division in Denmark for about a couple of thousand people at the same time when I was supposed to get married and you know, settle down in Germany, and I was supposed to move to Denmark. 
And then I had to meet all these people for an interview. I felt completely unprepared. I was like, oh my God, what's going on with me? It's like, you know, I've been being executive CEO during my 20s, late 20s. And, you know, and it's, not, it's not possible that I cannot meet these people. This was the conflict. This was the unreadiness. This, this, this uh, conflict in me to say, hey, what do you, what do you want to do? Do you want to grow your personal life? Uh, you know, your family? Or do you not want to chase your career and then find yourself, you know, alone at some point in time? Whatever the fears are, and I'm not justifying this is better or the other, at the same time, I, I hit that failure. I couldn't make the interview. I went to Copenhagen. I failed. I, I thought, I was like, okay, let, let me go for a workout. I went for a workout. The next thing, they're calling an ambulance to me because I was out of breath. That was a failure. This is a physical failure. And a lot of people have these limitations. Let me talk about the president of our technology group. This guy, when you go on stage, he's like a football player, American guy. When he talks about, he like, you know, moves the whole audience. Yet this guy is suffering from diabetes type A since 15 years ago. You would never know until he wrote a personal blog. These are the limits, the, the health, the physical, that major leaders do have. And they know how to, how to deal with it. Our CEO, Bill McDermott, just about three months ago, at, a, at, a, at his uh, own uh, dad's uh, 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 birthday party, um, wakes up tries to go for a water, falls over on a glass, loses his eye, yeah? And he still keep, keeps being CEO. He says, look, I might have lost my eye, but I've got a whole new vision for this company. And you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, long story short, embrace success and also embrace failure, learn how to deal with them, and, uh, Wish you get very, very happy, successful day. Thank you so much. And now we are going to invite uh, the questions will be reserved for the for the end of the session. So once the session is over, you can approach Philip, Nina, everyone else who's, who's speaking and ask questions. Uh, Vlako Kostov, an engineer, the head engineer at Panasonic Germany, is here with us to speak about the concept of design that I don't understand. Hello. It's really hard to speak after everybody has spoken already. <laughs> I must say, I, it's, it's, yeah, apart from this, uh, <laughs>